the next question was what advice would you give others that are thinking about starting their own project? Uh, consult early, consult often. Um, you don't want to have to be fighting an uphill battle within your own team or your own community to make a project happen. Try to build that consensus first before you do anything else. Um, I would not necessarily recommend you let it take five years. Um, we didn't really have a big sense of urgency at the time until we saw what was possible. And now I think it's kind of put us into high gear. But that, that would be my starting advice. The other piece would be, don't hesitate to reach out to um, the grocer and ask for not just the specifications, but the ROI spreadsheet I had mentioned. That will really help you conceptualize what's possible. You'll be able to run a whole bunch of different scenarios. If you consult with your community and direct to consumers, not the model, then okay, you have to adjust your price points and focus on your restaurants or your grocery stores. Every context is unique, but the, but the beauty of doing that detailed business planning is you can try to adapt your unique context to a business plan that will fit. Um, but being overcast and being really rainy really meant to us that traditional agriculture was not going to work. And so we've been really, we've gone now through a significant heat wave that just uh, wrap, ripped through BC um, a couple of weeks ago. We went through some torrential downpours um, after we had the, the thing installed in August. It, it was super rainy in, in that fall. And we've still had the same consistent weekly and bi-weekly harvests. I mean, the weather doesn't impact the actual production aside from maybe you'll track more mud in on your boots um, or the fan might run a little bit more when it's super hot. Um, the, the biggest issue you're gonna have um, is just germination failure. That's gonna impact you way more than the weather ever would. One of them was, I referenced it before, was your help in the business planning and analysis, particularly through that ROI spreadsheet, I think was crucial for us to get funded. So we wouldn't have got anything off the ground without that piece, so that, that to me was crucial. But then in terms of the actual implementation, the on-site training during the initial install, um, you guys actually sent out your CEO. I don't know if you do that for every install, but for us, that was a big boost of confidence for our staff um, to have to come out and have a full week of on-site training to get that thing initialized. Because when the container got dropped by the crane, the water gets hooked up, the electrical gets hooked up, the lights turn on, and we look at it and go, we have no idea what we need to do here. So to, to have Corey and his team, uh, that, that was a huge piece of, of the puzzle for us. Yeah, with every every installation, every project that we sort of implement, our goal is to show up on site, provide all the necessary training like we did uh, for Blair and his team uh, to ensure that the projects uh, are successful. That is definitely a key component of uh, the implementation process. She is being a bit modest. She she has grown, uh, you know, a lot of different veggie starters, a lot of different flowers. She understands um you know, scheduling is really the most important thing is getting your crop scheduling done. She's done the softwares before. So we got so incredibly lucky in, in who we hired. Um, and essentially what we were looking for the most important quality was someone who was willing to learn more than anything else, willing to experiment, willing to fail. Um, that was one of the big pieces. We knew there's some stuff that's not gonna germinate. We knew that there was gonna be some hiccups with the distribution model, with our software system, what, what have you. We needed someone who was willing to adapt and roll with those punches. And Crystal has been you know, key to the success of this project. I, I can't speak highly enough of her efforts. One, one sort of question leading into, I know we talked about some of the risks with the site prep. Um, if you could go back in time and tell yourself one thing about getting started, uh, what would you say? Uh, budget more than 10% for contingency, if I can be that blunt. Um, going back to, so we had, we've done a couple of different development projects in Prince Rupert, and generally speaking, we've done a contingency budget of 20%. Kind of best practice. I only did a 10% contingency for this because I was a little bit naive and thinking, all right, how complicated is putting a container on a truck, driving it here, craning it into place, leveling the ground, connecting to electrical and water. To me, that wasn't rocket science, but there are still so many things that can go wrong in that context. So that's what I would tell 
myself circa the start of 20, 2020 is budget 20% like all your other projects because it's better to be safe than sorry. The obvious impact on the community is the, the now the number of fresh greens that are going out to the community on a weekly basis. The impact there has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, we did do a subsequent survey of the first, I think it was the first 60 customers we surveyed after a couple of weeks of pickups. And we got some really great feedback from them. So we did make a couple of adjustments to our distribution model, to the way that we um, stored to certain varieties. And more often than not, people were just asking for more information. What are the types of varieties? Can you recommend types of recipes? Those types of things. Um, but Adrian Johnston, who the, the restaurateur who's featured in that video, she has been texting me almost every week when she picks up her greens to say, this is what I made for lunch today. This is what I made for dinner today using your greens. Here's my feedback on the kale. It had a very aggressive, sharp taste. It's really delicious. Thank you. Okay, this type of buttercrunch lettuce worked really well compared to the variety that I got last week. So that impact has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and then from the community at large, um, we have been donating the surplus harvest to Niska elders almost through the duration of 2021. Um, and the, the feedback there, again, is, is quite positive. We're giving them away for free because we want, we want to kind of use it as a marketing tactic, but also it's a really good way for people who might not otherwise have access to such good quality produce to, to get access to it. We're giving it away through our nonprofit offices. So, um, yeah, there's always, there's always hiccups and there's always a couple of naysayers who might have a complaint here or there, but generally speaking, the feedback has, has been overwhelmingly positive and we hope to continue that moving forward.